Inside every living organism is an inner sea. This sea is divided between extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid. Small changes constantly adjust the balance between the fluids of this sea. These changes are the foundation of homeostasis, a process that maintains a steady state inside. Outside the organism, the environment can change dramatically. Homeostasis depends on protecting the inner sea from outside change. The human body monitors this sea with dilution receptors in the hypothalamus, and carotid artery, blood volume receptors in the kidneys, and pressure receptors in the atrium of the heart. These receptors are part of a complex warning system for osmoregulation, which protects the sea within. Osmoregulation takes place in the kidneys, through which a significant portion of the blood constantly moves. Within each kidney, there are about a million tiny structures called kidney tubules, or nephrons. The head of each nephron forms a cup called a Bowman's capsule. Into this, a knot of capillaries transports blood. A Bowman's capsule functions as a crude filter. Some 20% of the blood plasma, consisting of water and the many chemicals within it, is forced by blood pressure into the kidney tubule. Unregulated, this process would produce about 180 liters of filtrate a day. Just imagine the problem of replacing that much liquid every 24 hours. Much of the osmoregulation function of a kidney nephron is to return to the blood useful water and essential chemicals and so prevent their waste. This work begins in the proximal tubule. Here, the cells lining the tubule walls use the energy of ATP molecules to actively transport glucose, amino acids, hormones, vitamins, and ions out of the tubule. Since the filtrate in the tubule contains more water than is in the surrounding cells, osmosis carries water out of the tubule and into the cells that line it. In the proximal tubule, about 80% of the filtrate is returned to blood capillaries. In the next section of the tubule, the loop of Henle, osmosis continues to extract water. But here in the loop of Henle, a difficulty arises. The concentration of solutes in the tubule begins to approach the concentration in the cells lining it. The outflow of water stops, yet the body needs to recover more filtrate. No known molecule can use ATP energy to pump water across a membrane by active transport. Osmosis is the only tool at hand, so what is needed is a greater concentration of solutes, which effectively means less water in the solution, outside the tubule. The kidney meets this challenge in a section of the kidney known as the medulla by creating a very high local concentration of sodium ions. The loop of Henle dips down into this region. As it moves into the medulla, the kidney tubule temporarily takes on another function as a transport mechanism for sodium, carrying it into the medulla to maintain a high concentration.
As the loop of Henle descends, cells along the tubule use active transport to pump sodium into the loop. This carries the sodium back into the heart of the medulla, where other cells begin to pump it out. The result is a consistently high concentration of solute in the medulla. But the kidney doesn't make immediate use of this difference. Instead, the nephron emerges from this region to what is called the distal tubule. Remember that in Bowman's capsule, chemicals of all variety were crudely removed, then almost all returned. The distal tubule functions as a fine-tuning device to adjust the inner C and throw out any excess of a particular chemical. For example, a hormone might carry a message from a control center reacting to an excess of potassium in the body. In response, the cells lining the distal tubule use active transport to pump potassium out of the cells and into the tubule. Finally, the urine is carried from the distal tubule to the collecting tubule. This dips back into the medulla, where the high sodium concentration is maintained by the loop of Henle. Here, osmosis can take place, allowing the collecting tubules to fine-tune the water concentration in the blood. For example, the hormone ADH, or antidiuretic hormone, constantly signals the cell walls to remain permeable to water. Osmosis moves water out of the tubule. This concentrates the urine left behind. A lack of ADH, or the presence of caffeine or alcohol, signals the cell membranes to become impermeable. Water cannot return to the cells, and the result is a large quantity of dilute urine. Not every organism needs such complex osmoregulation to maintain an inner sea. The concentration of solutes is very similar inside a sea cucumber and outside, so it gets by with direct interchange across its cell membranes. A saltwater fish, on the other hand, has more water inside than outside and risks dehydration. It has evolved a kidney tubule with no knot of capillaries. As a result, it filters out only small amounts of urine concentrated with waste chemicals. By contrast, a freshwater fish has less water inside than out and is in danger of absorbing too much water. It has evolved a nephron with a large knot of capillaries, which filters out large amounts of dilute urine. More complex still, our own system. Crude filtration. Crude return of water and chemicals. Creation of a region of highly concentrated solute. Fine tuning of chemicals, fine tuning of water. Comparing osmoregulation systems gives us a fascinating hint of how we may have evolved from organisms living in a protective sea to organisms protecting a sea within.